Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, we're going to be going in depth on the color picker tools and mastering all the different options available to us beyond just the basic foreground and background colors. So, I'm going to assume most of us have some sort of basic knowledge of color, how it works, you know, mixing red, green, and blue, and we've used the basic color tools before, but I want to go in depth in explaining what some of these things are and some of these other panels and tools that maybe you've never ventured into. So you hopefully leave this video with a better understanding of this really important and foundational tool in Photoshop and many other editing programs. So before we begin, I do have just an example picture open where we might be sampling off of it. And I also have the color tab open. So if we go to window, you can have that color tab. You can also have the swatches tab open. These are both a couple different color tools that we can pick from. So one thing to begin, a quick tip, shortcut D will just default your colors back to the default black foreground and white background. Also the shortcut X will switch your foreground and background colors. That's always useful to know. So let's say we click on the foreground color so we can change it. This will open our color picker that we might be familiar with. And by default, it's on the hue panel. And if you didn't know already, you can actually switch to many different views and modes of adjusting. So you can switch from hue, saturation, brightness, or you can use red, green, and blue adjustments, or you can even go into lab color mode. So lightness and A and B lets you adjust the blue and yellow or red and green amounts in an image. So let's say we're really trying to get that perfect color. Let's say we start off somewhere in this medium red, right? But we say we want it to be a little bit brighter specifically. In this case, we can go to the brightness and we can brighten it up or darken it up. So we can make it the brightest possible red in that segment. Let's say we want it to be a little bit more saturated as well. We can go to the S section and we can saturate it up a little bit or we can desaturate it. Let's say we want to put a little bit of green in there because right now it's just totally pure red. Here we can put some green in there. Say we want to add some blue, we can add some blues in there. And we can get these really pastel -y or nice creamy colors that maybe you wouldn't be able to find in your basic hue. Although they're all there, sometimes it's just hard to find them when everything's in front of you. Now some other tools available to you if you don't know, you have the hex code. So although this specific video, I'm gonna try to keep it simple everyday terms, not really gonna go into the in-depth math, that could be its own separate video. But he hex codes are a hexadecimal code representing the color that you have here. You know, the amounts of red, green, and blue on this exact point in a code format. So this, you can actually copy and paste it. If you go on some websites that have color palette samples or examples, or even Google has a color picker, you can copy hex codes from there and you can use them in Photoshop just by pasting them. So this can be a, a way to get references and samples from other people or give someone the exact hex code that you're working with that you want. You, sometimes you see these symbols here and this is saying that this specific color, you can't really make it in print because print works off of CMYK or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which is K, or you know only web colors, something that will display on the web, not a really specific color that can't be displayed accurately. So all of these informations are available to you. Additionally, whenever you're working on your image, if you go to image mode, right now we're in RGB color, but you have the option to work in different color modes depending on the output that you're specifically have in mind. In the layer panel as well, this is kind of getting off topic of color, but you can see all the different color channels, red, green, blue, red, green and blue individually, and you can work on them individually or, or hide them and you see what happens. So heading back to the color picker, a couple other things are when you are working on a color, so you have this like medium green. If I do change it, it does let me go back to the old if I don't like this adjustment just by clicking on that medium green. Or if I want, I can add it to my swatches. So if I want to add this specific color, I can click there. I can give it a specific name like forest green, press OK, and I will check my swatches. You'll see that color that I just made is there, along with a bunch of other sample colors that Photoshop has given you. And if you ever want to use these swatches, you just click on them, and it'll automatically make your foreground color 
that swatch. Another thing you have is color libraries, and this is delving a little bit more into print territory and what specific tones are available in printing from these different brands and companies. Additionally, aside from dragging the points on this map or sliding the slider up and down, you can always input values and numbers specifically. So Hue operates you know, on a 360 degree wheel, saturation from zero to 100%, brightness zero to 100%, and red, green, blue operates from values of zero to 255. And when you combine all, the, all three of those, they create different unique colors. So if you're getting confused, don't get confused. You don't always have to use all of these and you'll see when you adjust one, one goes down, the other goes up. It's just like a mixture. Each of these kind of has its own map. Here we have saturation in the corner, darkness in the bottom, desaturation, the more left you go, and then brightness up and down. So you can influence all of them if you know kind of how to read it or just instinctually what you're looking at. Of course, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is that you can always pick colors with your color picker when you have this open. As soon as you move out of the color picker, the ink dropper comes up and we can ink drop a certain color from our photo or even from the UI. And you do have this color picker menu that's available like this in kind of a triangle, but same deal. You have the hue wheel. In this case, it's actually represented in its 360 degree wheel. You have the saturation and brightness slider. You don't have all those extra panels that you might get in the color panel, like red, green, blue, and lab color, but you might really not always need those. And beyond that, you know, you also have the gradient tool, which operates in kind of the same way. You have your color picker that pops up, and you also have the opacity in this case of different colors that you can choose. Uh, another kind of thing with the gradient tool is instead of solid gradients, you can also do noise gradients which has its own kind of color picking model of a mixtures of red, green, and blue limits allowed. And you can randomize those and create your own color gradients like that. So there's so much more that we could go into in color. That's something I might save for a future dedicated video or something that you might wanna research more in depth into. And just all of this color theory in general and how it works with printing, something you might want to further research if you need to. But hopefully I've armed you with a little bit more foundational knowledge to give you some more information about all the different ways that Color Picker works together. So if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like on it below, subscribe to my channel so you stay tuned for all of my future videos, and I'll leave a link to some other Photoshop tutorials that you can click on in the end cards if you wanna check out more on my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.